What's up YouTube, it's your boy Tater Don, and today we'll be going over how to remove distortion from audio clips. Specifically, today we'll be talking about vocals. All right, so right away, I'll jump right into playing the distorted audio. I'll solo the vocal just so we can focus on one central part of the song so we don't get too distracted. And also for confidentiality purposes for the artist. All right, so I'll choose this section here that we'll be using um, for the demonstration. And I'll just play that to you right quick and you can see how it sounds. Bite this apple bottom, cause I'm a real rough rider. Blow your mind and watch you get excited. Boy, I came to work it. All right, right away, you kind of see um, let me zoom in a little bit. If you zoom in on the audio, you kind of see that the it's peaking. And it's what that was is the artist recorded the song a little too hot, um, too high of an input for their interface, and they might not have a compressor or anything like that. But that's perfectly fine because we can fix things of that nature. Um, common mistake, um, usually a easier solution would be to say, you know, have the artist just re-recorded and things like that. But that's not always the case. Um, I have artists that send me songs from all over the world, literally um, on a daily basis. And, you know, trying to communicate to them, some of them don't speak English that well. So it's always sometimes best to have, you know, tools in your arsenal that you can use in cases like this to where you can kind of shine and show your skill set. And they'll ultimately be happier with their end product because they weren't aware that you could actually fix it. So right away, I'll jump right into it and show you um, how to solve this problem that we um, have here. All right, so the first thing you want to do is go into Audio Suite, go down to Noise Reduction, and go over to D-Clip. Once we have that plugin pulled up, it'll look like this on this default setting. You want to make sure that you're maintaining the originality of the vocal just enough to where the distortion is going and it still sounds like that artist. So what we'll do, we'll dial back on a threshold and we'll find a sweet spot that we'll use. Bite this apple bottom, because I'm a real rough rider. Blow your mind and watch you get excited. Apple bottom, cause I'm a real rough rider. Blow your mind and watch you get excited. Apple bottom, cause I'm a real rough rider. Blow your mind and watch you get excited. Apple bottom, cause I'm a real rough rider. All right, for me, I uh, think we'll go around 3.9. Once I get down to about five or six, it starts to sound too muffled for me. And that's not what we want. We only want to do it enough to, you know, Tackle the distortion at hand because there's not that much, but there it, it's still there. So we want to make sure that we do that. For example, say you only wanted to apply this distortion technique to this section of the song. You will just hit render and it'll literally just get rid of that. And if you play it, bite this apple bottom because I'm a real rough rider. It literally nine day difference. Bite this apple bottom because I'm a real rough rider. Back and forth. Bite this apple bottom because I'm a real rough rider. Bite this apple bottom, cause I'm a real rough rider. Like it literally just saves the audio completely. So what, if you want to apply it to the entire song, you would say, um, so I'll zoom out here. All of the clips are distorted, so I'm just going to apply it to the whole song, actually. Um, I think I might have just deleted it. Let's just pull that back up. So what I'll do, I'll just select the entire song. Since we have all audio clips, um, start from top to bottom and just go highlight the region that you want to do um it'll it'll go by pretty fast we'll set the threshold back to 3.9 which it was and hit render and as you can see on the second screen it's rendering out each individual track and once it's complete it'll you know get rid of all of the distortion in the song and we can just mix it from scratch now that we have the cleaner audio some people may not know that when you mix distorted audio it really messes with the sound because the distortion becomes more prevalent the more that you add compressors and EQs and saturation and things of that nature you're limited in your ability to work with it whereas if you get rid of it in the beginning you'll have more flexibility and room to be creative because you're not limited by the thought of oh I can't use too much compression because it might ultimately end up being too much and you bring too much of the distortion out which in some cases the client may say oh you added the distortion to the vocals and it sounds weird when in the beginning it's really because they sent that to you like that but they won't know that and trying to explain that to them just save yourself the headache and get rid of it in the beginning all right so going back over to the audio we have now completely removed the uh, distortion not completely but good enough play a different section wish you could from long beach to 
And as you can see, it's literally like night and day difference. Um, I'll play a different phrase here. I'll play this one. Good. I look good. I look good. From Long Beach to Compton to Inglewood. I look good. And play the, the the cleaner audio. I look good. I look good. From Long Beach to Compton to Inglewood. I look good. Yeah, so ultimately it's, it completely saved us from having to deal with that distorted audio and so now i'll show you how to do it individually on the uh channel if you wanted to do it this way which i don't recommend because it is a very cpu intensive plugin it's a very cpu heavy intensive plugin so that means that it'll lag a hundred percent of the time and that's not what you want because you won't be able to hear it synchronized with the instrumental but if you wanted to do it on the timeline what you will do you'll simply go down to noise reduction go over to rx 8d clip whichever version of the plugin you have is fine and it's the same method, but as you can see at the bottom of the screen, there's 23,185 sample delay. So that means whenever you play the audio, you won't hear it until 23,185 samples later. Work it. Put your thing down, flip it, then reverse it. For that, I'll play it in context with, context with the instrumental, just so you can kind of see what I'm saying. Work it. Put your thing down, flip it, then reverse it. Make it walk like you As you can hear, it's kind of like lagging behind, but if I make this plug-in inactive. Work it. Put your thing down, flip it, then reverse it. Make it walk like you So that is why we want to do it in the audio suite, but if you wanted to do it on the timeline itself or in the, the plug-in section of this specific audio track, that is perfectly fine. If you want to do it that way, that is how you do it. And other than that, that is all for today. Thank you for tuning into the video, and I look forward to showing you more.